For those who do not know, Dan Price, founder and CEO of Gravity Payments. Um, while scrolling through my LinkedIn feed, it was this statement, this post that absolutely stopped my scroll. And um, for those who didn't catch it, I just want to read this real quick. Your words, we laid off zero people despite losing half our revenue. Our employees responded with voluntary pay cuts and record sales. We repaid all the pay cuts and are now giving out small raises and are financially healthy. I love this line, CEOs like me don't get you out of a crisis, employees do, trust them. So kind of made me teary. Um, it's a really bold move that you made. Um, when so many that, people- that, that the employees made. That the employees made, yes. And so here, you know, people are always saying power to the people, but you gave, literally gave power to your people. Um, you know, why did you make this choice, Dan? Uh, well, I mean, I didn't have any other option. I wasn't, I didn't have any capability of, of it. And, you know, our team has just come through every time, you know, and one thing that is probably worth pointing out for context is like what we do because like our job is to help small businesses and small businesses lost 55 percent of their revenue so so what that meant was like you know like the people that we're passionate about that we care about we're we're so on the ropes and we in turn also lost 55% of our revenue. Um, and so one of the things that I think it's missed about what the employees did was they, they, they did volunteer pay cuts to avoid layoffs and to protect each other, that's true. But they also volunteered pay cuts to not increase fees for small businesses. Like one of our competitors, Heartland Payment Systems, they were facing the same crisis as us and they added a hundred dollar fee to all of their customers mm. which would have solved it for us and our employees knew that because i didn't say like we can't do this or we can't do that be it increase fees for customers for small businesses or do layoffs what i said was i'm not going to make any decisions on this for at least a week because i think you all deserve full transparency and I, I, I said that I hoped we wouldn't do one of those two things, but I did present every option to the team, even options that would be horrific for me personally and for, for all of us. And then what happened after that was our team responded by creating so many pieces of products and innovation and accessibility for small businesses. So you know, small businesses are still in a, a terrible situation, 30% revenue down since the beginning of the pandemic, but it's not 55%. And part of that reason is because of people at Gravity Payments. So, you know, I guess, I guess it's just a long way of, of answering your question, which was like, there really was no other option. And what turned out uh, was that the employees, you know, cared so much about what our mission was and what we're fighting for those small businesses. They were willing to do whatever it took. And when somebody clearly has that type of motivation mm -hmm. uh, and that's not due to me or our culture or anything like that, that's, those are, that's, that's the due to those people. Like that's mm -hmm. who they are. Um, okay. It would just be stupid to not put that power in their hands. I don't think it takes some kind of brilliant genius to figure that out. And I think that when we pretend that it does and when people kind of like praise me, you know, and, and talk about how great it is and everything, I think what we miss is like, this should be normal. And the only reason why we think it's not normal is because there's so many other companies that are setting the bar so low mm -hmm. uh, that just regular normal behavior is considered heroic by some people and i think that's really sad right yeah, agreed for sure and um the fact i think speaking as as the founder as the ceo um you know you kind of have a track record of uh creating trust 
and um, with your employees, you know, back in the day in 2015, taking that million dollar pay cut and saying, hey, you know, let's let's even the playing field here. I want to make sure that you're cared for and that you're compensated to give everyone that 70,000 minimum salary. That was a, another bold move. Um, so when we look at like risk versus reward um, in all things business, with, with that move that you made, how have you found the reward from that, uh, from that risk that you took? Well, Allie, I, I really appreciate you, you know, what you're highlighting, what you're saying. Um, and I, 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 I really do. I'm happy we get to spend this time together. I kind of disagree with you, which is, I don't really think that I created trust or that that move created trust. I think that the way we were doing it before, having a pay scale at the bottom of $30,000 and at the top of a million, and a lot of the other things that we've been conditioned to believe are normal and are acceptable and are quote unquote, you know, market forces that none of us can control. I think those things are ripping away trust. Mm -hmm. And so I would say maybe there was some like repairing of trust that happened, but I think, uh, you know, if you take away all of the betrayal mm -hmm. that we have, you know, like baked into our economy, baked into our lives because of the fact that now, you know, because pe so many people are so desperate, we're all conditioned to think that like, our economic success even is our self-worth and all these sorts of things, mm -hmm. which is just devastating to think about. And so, you know, so I think what we did was we took some steps to not create trust, but to not break trust. Right. And I think that, um, you know, I think that like people are willing to, when they can sacrifice and make changes and, and do what they believe in. And you see this with like, Right now, you know, we're all trying to do our part to save small businesses, mm. but you have the likes of Amazon and Walmart taking advantage of government policies, taking advantage of the way the economy is set up. And you see how people really want to do the right thing and support small businesses, but we, the way we structure it makes it so difficult and so impossible to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that I think that like we, I think we need to just recognize the harm that's being caused and be accountable to it, be and enforce transparency and then have accountability. And I think if we want to try to repair the trust that we're losing by how the system is currently unfairly rewarding those on top and unfairly punishing basically everybody else, mm -hmm. um, you know, if as long as the system's like that, we are going to be ripping apart people's trust and goodwill every single day. Well, and when it comes to, agreed, when it comes to trust, so what advice would you have for other founders of companies who, um, you know, are at the helm in these really crazy times and who are scared themselves, just as scared as their employees perhaps, um, who want to make these bold steps that you are, I think the word that you just said that we just spoke on trust for you to trust your people. And like you said, you know, that, you know, they're, they're smarter than I am. They're, they're doing a great job. I trust them to make the right decision. I, I feel like there's a lot in, uh, of people in power, um, roles that are uncomfortable delegating that and, and having that yeah. trust. How do you build that? I think my advice would be to recognize the asymmetries in your relationships. Recognize where you have the ability to hold somebody else accountable, and yet they don't have the same ability to hold you accountable. And try to do what you can to, to fix that. And also I would say, don't try to focus on building their trust, focus on stop destroying their trust. Mm -hmm. And a, a similar analogy is motivation. A lot of people are like, oh, your employees are so motivated because you're a good leader and you have this $70,000 minimum wage policy and that proves yada, yada, yada. And I just think that's completely wrong, like 180 degrees wrong. I think my employees were plenty motivated before they ever met me or heard about me or the company. Mm -hmm. And I think that 
you know, instead invest in their capability, invest in their, you know, if you want to think of as agency or license, but basically like what I mean by that is invest in undoing how you're basically creating a dependency where they have to fear you and they have to be dependent on you by giving them the tools and resources that are rightfully theirs. And even that phrasing, giving them, you know, just is just messed up the way we kind of have things structured, but stop taking it away from them. And so I would say that is a journey that we have a long way to go at gravity payments. And it's not something where all of a sudden you wake up one day and decide, you know, I'm going to stop being so bad. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get a little bit less bad every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the right way for leaders to approach it and avoid the type of self-deception that makes people think that they're some type of hero or genius, when in reality, they're probably being, relative to their employees, in many cases, over-rewarded. Now, the exception to that, I would say, is very small businesses where the business owner is is in a not not in a good situation and i think in that case my advice to that business owner would be be honest about what your intentions are with your team and that you want to solve these things but you you don't see how you have the resources you have to be fully transparent if you want to go that route the employees have to have access to pretty much everything that's not like private information against one individual mm -hmm. and they need to have a voice and a mechanism to hold you accountable as you are creating that reality together. So get the systems and structures and the intentions right. A perfect example of this is, you know, we had to like suspend raises and things like that because the crisis we're in. But we said, as soon as we, we said, at what point does it make sense for us to resume and then backdate raises mm. and, and make up for lost time of raises? And we all worked on that together and we came up with, a met, with metrics that we all agreed on you know, that everybody approved of and agreed to. Yeah. So, you know, so those are, the, that's an example of how, that's not where I want to be. I'm not the type of, I, I, I don't want to be that person that's not giving people the raises they deserve. So let's fix it together kind of thing. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the absolute minimum that we should expect from our leaders. And yet we're not even getting that. Right. Well, you certainly speak to um, integrity um, and to practice what you preach that way. And it sounds it's exactly what you're doing. And um, hopefully your model is one that, that other companies will adopt as well. Um, just can't thank you enough for the word that you shared. And um, just again, by leading by example, it was inspiring to read your post and um, encouraging to hear your words. And there's hope there. Um, you know, when we look at all of these causes that need support right now, one of the biggest ones being mental health you know, um, it seems like conducting business the way that you and your company are, um, the way that you support, um, that could go a long way in terms of mental health and helping people to feel safe and ownership um, in the rules that they're in. So, um, yeah, thank you so much thank you. for all of thank this. You. So appreciate your time, Dan. I appreciate you. I appreciate you doing this. I, again, I would kind of say, you know, I think that the, the status quo is actually hurting people's mental health. Mm -hmm. And I think we're trying to hurt it less. And, really? and we don't want to hurt it at all. But, you know, if you're, if you're paying somebody less than a living wage, if they have to work too much, if they have too much stress, and it's not a reasonable, you know, position that somebody could be in for 20, 30, 40 years, it's going to have a toll on somebody's mental health. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I wish I would have realized that earlier in my life, um, but I'm trying to make up for lost time where I can. Well, I think it's great. And I love that you say, well, we're just going to do it really well right now. I love that you say with all modesty and honesty to say, we're going to do it less bad. We're going to do yeah. it less. Um, awesome. That's what thank you for being but awesome. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And it's a pleasure to meet you. And I hope to meet you in person someday. That would be fantastic, Dan. Thank you so much okay. for your time. Keep rocking it. Thanks, like you Sally. Did.